GTM Podcast p o r i s a n The Cannibal Episode 21 Hello everyone We hope you enjoy this GTM Podcast p o r i s a n The Cannibal and Learning Buddhist Wisdom Since this story is about the Buddha's past life the characters' names and culture may be unfamiliar but the story and its lesson are well worth of your time. Before we start on our program, if you have not watched or listened to the previous episode of Porisat yet, we suggest you go back to listen to them first for more understanding because it's almost come to the end of the series. And if you like the program and enjoyed it so far, we have yet more to come in the next series. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share. Thus, let us begin. In the last episode, King Sutasoma told Porisat to return and rule over his kingdom. Porisat replied that he would not be able to return because he was the enemy of his people. He had eaten their fathers, mothers, brothers sisters, and relatives. They call him the great cannibal and exile him to the forest, and he knew that if he returned, they would surely kill him. The king saw that Porisat was afraid. So he said, Porisat, even though you were once a violent person, I was able to make you calm the people of Benares will be forgiving. I will make it possible for you to again be the ruler of your kingdom. If I fail, I will give you half of my possessions. Do not worry about this. Porisat exclaimed, Even in your kingdom, there are people who do not want me to live. How could I rule in your empire? King Sutasoma emphasized with Porisat. He understood that he was willing to abstain from eating human flesh. He accepted the five precepts and had given his life to him. He knew he must help Porisat return to rule his kingdom. Then he thought, what if Porisat remembered the happiness he had experienced in his past? Maybe, then he would be delighted to return to his kingdom. King Sutasoma reminded Porisat of the delicious foods, magnificent garments, luxury bed chambers, the beautiful women, and the lands that he possessed. Porisat listened intently. His mind followed along with the vivid memories of happy days and nights spent at his palace. He said, Thank you, my friend, for reminding me of my past treasure life. Since this is your wish, I will do as you ask and return to my kingdom. Then he praised the king, saying, When the moon waxed to the full moon, his light increased every day. It is like having a wise friend which brings you joy and prosperity every day. A wise friend, just as I have with you, your majesty. I have performed good deeds that have brought me much happiness. Then King Sutasoma and Porisat, together with 101 kings, left the jungle to travel to Benares. When they reached the border, they met villagers, who after listening to the story from King Sutasoma, pressed him and in a large caravan travel with him and the king to Benares. After they reached the entrance to the city, King Sutasoma ordered everyone to stop and rest and send a message into the kingdom. When Porisat was exiled into the forest, his son ascended to the throne as the king. Minister Kalahati had remained in his position, 
and when notified that King Sutasoma brought many people to the entrance of the city, he ordered the gates to remain closed. He did not know why the king and his followers were there, or what his majesty would say if he allowed them to enter the city haphazardly. If incidents occur, he would be held responsible. The actions of the minister should be held in high esteem. He performed his duties responsibly. If he had performed his duties because he was afraid or to enhance his position and reputation, it would be possible for him to make mistakes. Thus, if a person performs their duties sensibly but is dissatisfied others, they should not be reprimanded or punished. When King Sutasoma realized that Minister Kalahati had ordered the entrance to the city closed, he and several of his followers went to the gate and informed the guard he wished to have an audience with the king. The guard hurriedly took the message to the minister, and the minister rushed to the king. The king found that King Sutasoma was a virtuous and wise person who maintains the precepts. He knew that wherever King Sutasoma went, goodness and peace followed. He ordered the gates open and quickly went to the entrance and respectfully welcomed King Sutasoma and his followers. He led them into the throne room and invited them to sit on royal seats. He ordered the queen, the counselor, and orders courtiers of King Brahmadatta, the last king, to join them. When all were present, King Sutasoma asked, Minister, why did you leave the gate closed and not allow your king to enter the city? The minister answered, Your Majesty, back when he ruled the kingdom, he ate many people. He did something that kings should never do. That is why we do not allow him to enter the city. King Sutasoma understood and said, Minister, from now on, you do not have to worry. I have taught Porisa to stop committing sins, and he is maintaining the precepts. He will not harm anyone again. Even if he must give up his life, he will not break the precepts. You are not in any danger. I ask everyone to trust me. Those who are sons and daughters must take care of their parents. Those who take care of their parents will go to heaven. Those who do not will go to unhappy realm. Minister and counselor, you were friends and attendants of the past king. Because of him, you received support and attain a high rank position. In return, you should perform beneficial deeds for the king. Queen, your majesty, you were a commoner, and because of him, you have been given the position of queen and have been blessed with prince and princess. You too, should perform beneficial deeds for the king. King Sutasoma continued, A king who wins over a person who should not win is not a king. A friend who wins over a friend is not a friend. A wife who does not respect her husband is not a wife. Children who do not take care of their aging parents are not called children. A council that does not have a wise man is not a council. One who cannot speak the Dhamma is not a wise man, but the one who can eliminate passion, anger, ignorance, and speak the Dhamma is called a wise man. If the wise man does not teach among the foolish, you would not know whether he is a wise man. You will only know him as wise, when he explains the Dharma. Therefore, 
A wise man who speaks the Dhamma clearly raises the flag of a wise one. The king, the minister, the counselors, and all the attendants were happy and encouraged after hearing the Dhamma from King Sutta Soma. They consult with each other and agree to invite Porisat to enter the kingdom and re-establish him as their king. They proclaim throughout the empire, Do not panic when Porisat enters the city. He has stopped eating human flesh and is now observing the precepts. But will King Sutasoma be able to bring the kings from the 101 kingdom into Benares? Will the nobles and his subjects accept Porisas as their king? What will happen next? We will find that out in the final episode of Porisat the Cannibal. If you are enjoying this program, subscribe, like and share to this podcast with family and friends. Until next time.